to a video taping the show. I do. I do. What lovers? I'm not sure if I made this clear enough to you, but I am impressionable as all shit. And when I say impressionable, I don't mean the sick impression I can do of the surfer dude from Spongebob. He, he made, made me experience high tide! Oh. Perfect segue, I guess. When I was but a wee child watching the Nicktoons, when commercials would come on, I didn't look at them as a way to interfere with my programming and try to make its way into my mind so they can steal my hard-earned money. I was way too into commercials, basically. So today, we will be looking at the commercials that made me who I am, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that, and rank them on this handy-dandy little graphic here. It's a quadrant. We're doing math. Don't, don't click off this video. On the x-axis, we have good product and ass in a bad way, because I have to clarify, because you know we're, we're big fans of ass here on this channel. And then on the Y, we have, why did I like this? And then at the tippy top, entertaining. Starting off on a very strange note, we are going to be looking at this Listerine Agent Cool Blue commercial. I remember this really standing out in my head. That quality. Sam finds his brushing boring. My secret weapon? <laughs> he looks Listerine like he could be in Agent Jimmy Neutron, cool this character. Cool. 2000s 3D animation. Blue, Cause when he can see the plaque, he can brush more effectively. And cause it's from Listerine, it kills bad breath germs too. It just seems like such a strange thing for a kid to be excited about. So here's my explanation because there is one. I loved anything secret agent themed. Like I would go to McDonald's and get the Spy Kids toy and then go to the movie and spend more time playing with the, like the little decoder machine than actually watching the movie. But anyway, so Listerine Agent Cool Blue. I have a very vivid memory of this because I would watch this commercial. I'm like, oh my God, it stains your teeth. And he's a detective. I thought there was going to be more of like a detective element to this when it's just brushing your fucking teeth. They're tricking their kids into brushing their teeth. This is pro-dentist propaganda. I love saying shit like that because my brother's a dentist and he hates it. He's like, floss. I'm like, I'll floss when I'm dead. Anyway, I ended up making my mom buy me this product and you know, I did the little swishy swish and I was like, ooh, my teeth are blue. And then I brushed it off and I was like, my disappointment is immeasurable. Dude, so underwhelmed. This wasn't that great of a commercial. The product, I get why they did it, but as a kid, do you know how much my heart broke? I'm like, I'm not a detective. I'm just some chump ass kid that was tricked into brushing her teeth. For this one, I'm putting it in like the why did I like this and ass in a bad way quadrant and have it almost hugging the in-between of good product and ass because the, the product I know why it exists and it exists for a good reason but I remember just how bitter little Athena was so that is the placement of that next up we have Chester Cheetah Cheetos mystery ad now I love Cheetos but specifically the puffy ones and I remember this specific ad was for the twisty ones, which I don't know why they ever left. I know it's the same flavor as just the regular puffs, but I mourn those Cheetos. They're, they were twisty and some of them made your tongue change color. Fuck. Anyway, this mystery ad was like a series. Let's take a look. You're gonna see me get very passionate. It's Chester Cheetah. We are coming for the Cheetos Spooky. recipe. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, this is twisted. Agent <laughs> X, the safe of the Cheetos recipe has been stolen, but I found a clue. Upload it. We'll check it out. Chester, what are you gonna do? Was that kid trying to do a British accent? We'll check it out. Chester. Chester the Cheetah is hot. <laughs> Another clue. Kids in Paris. This part. Like, how the fuck? How was I supposed to know? With what you showed me of those scraps of paper, how was I supposed to know? Chester Cheetah. Flaming hot Fiona. Fiona is flaming hot. Happy Pride Month! Kids and parents help Chester Cheetah find the stolen recipe. What code? And over the recipe. <laughs> they do not edit. <laughs> I do. Wait a second, is that that guy from Lazy Town? Spartacus, you're supposed to be good. Agents. So that's supposed to be representative of the viewer. But I wasn't fucking there. And I did all the goddamn work. They made a fool out of me. I went on the website, I did my research, and I was like, oh, is it gonna be the one in the volcano? Fiona. Is it gonna be Metal Jaw? Is it gonna be this guy? Introduce a new villain at the very fucking end that we've never met before. They do not edit. <laughs> I do. I was trying to anticipate the twists and turns, but the clues led me nowhere. And then in the end, it was just like all the villains were there. There was no mystery, and it broke my stupid little heart. No denying it, it's a fantastic product. I am 75% Cheeto dust. It is entertaining, but I'm gonna still keep it a little bit low because there was no mystery to be solved and they, they swindled me. Never trust a cheetah. Once a cheetah, always a cheetah. Next up, we have the Goldfish Crackers commercial. Like, if we're talking thorough, this bitch has 57 episodes. 
Most TV shows don't get that many episodes. It probably has its own lore. I can make a whole separate episode on this if you want. Like, you know I'll do it. This is everything I wished the Cheetos ad campaign did. Let's jump in. <laughs> Walter, it's time I start thinking outside the bag. I hear you, brother. Swim around and see what else is out there. Well, whatever you're looking for, I know you'll find it. So nostalgic. How to get out and meet people, Gilbert. Friends are not just gonna magically appear out of thin air. Or at least not usually. How's it going? I'm Finn. Hey, Finn. Uh, well, what kind of name is that, Irish? Why no, am shutter. I sentimental oh. towards so, these characters? From? Bag on the nightstand. Bag on the nightstand. You know Gary. No, but it's a big bag. Where are you guys from? Snack bowl. Classic baggy. How about that guy? <laughs> Pantry. He ends up being one of the main characters too. He's extreme or something. You don't feel like a fish out of water? I am a fish out of water. Damn it, they made the joke before I could, but I was gonna say classic fish out of water story. <laughs> but of course they already thought of it. That, that smile is bad. Goldfish. Good writing. You're establishing a story and then also showing off the different flavors. There's like the pretzel, there's like extra cheesy, there's like the multicolored ones. They all have like a little bit of personality already, but you kind of want to see more from them and more from them you do see. They're all around like 15 seconds to a minute. Let's go to, you know what? Season four, episode one. Let's see how much changes. Let's see if the graphics look a bit clearer. Oh my God. This looks like it's a fucking movie. Wow. Ready to find Gilbert? Oh, bro. Gilbert's the one that's like, oh, I'm shy. I'm a little bit of a coward. I'm the pretzel flavor. So he gets lost and I actually do remember this arc. They have arcs in their commercials. Chester Cheetah, you decrepit old bitch, take notes. We're losing altitude. That's a little too realistic, brother. <gasps> <laughs> oh, it's all coming back to me. The extreme one, the one that's always like exuding this, this weird cheese dust, has a British brother. That was another arc. I have to make a whole video on this now. Be prepared in July. One more, I'm sorry. I gotta figure out what happens with Gilbert. Oh, he's in the vacuum? That's what I'm just saying. Like, the creativity is on another level with this. Greetings, friend. I'm IQ, collector of rare and valuable objects. This, for instance, absolutely priceless. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? I'm a nerdy little goldfish that someone won't eat. Molding away in this sack. At least I'm not in a butt crack bars. Are you guys ready for a twist? Are you ready for the big reveal? I don't even like goldfish, bro. I convinced myself when I was younger that I liked them because I like these commercials that much. Now that's what I call advertising. It's not like I hate them. I'm just very much indifferent towards them. If somebody offers me like, hey, you want like a bag of goldfish? I'll be like, do you have anything else? And they're like, no. I'll be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't. I'll just put it in my mouth just to salt it up. I'm gonna never say that again. Just a sensible salty treat. The snack that smiles back is gonna go all the way at the tippy top of entertaining, but I'm going to keep it directly in the middle of good product and ass because like I said, not really any strong feelings either way. Maybe I'll just scoot it a little bit more towards good product, but not by much, literally there, just a smidge. Get ready for a really weird tone shift and rant for this next one, but I simply put anything Billy Mays. Hi, Billy Mays here for the original Quick Chop. Again, be prepared for a tone shift. But when he died in 2009, I remember emailing my best friend at the time being like, he's the reason why I want to be an actor. And I remember reading that email years later and being like, what the fuck was I talking about? But like, I really analyzed it the other day. I was just sitting with myself and I was like, no, I literally do what Billy Mays does though. On a much smaller scale, he is the blueprint in his iconic blue shirt. He comes on, he's like, Billy Mays here with- That's called being a fucking YouTuber. That's called having influence. That's called entertaining and cranking shit up to level goddamn 19. I love the energy he brings. It's very over the top for sure, but me too. Billy Mays is for sure very entertaining. I don't have to say that. He's a classic. Even though we didn't watch any of his specific commercials, I'm just gonna say it. I trust him. So I'm gonna put the quality at good product. Talk about being easily swayed again. Following in Goldfish's ginormous footsteps for such a small snack, we have Pop-Tarts that also has a tremendous series. It's definitely more episodic, but a lot of episodes. They, they clearly put a lot of work into it. 
It is a beautiful day here in France. The birds are chirping. The bees, they are buzzing. It is all très magnifique. It's, uh, it's oui. Tom and it Jerry vibes. It's like Roadrunner vibes. Monsieur, you are toast. French toast? Ha. Meet American. French toast. Out of this complete the breakfast. France theme. Crazy good. That's what you get to look forward to at the end. Classic. Tot crazy good. It's formulaic, but in a good way. We have that sense of familiarity. I remember joining in when I was a kid when that shit would play. Honestly, it's crazy that when I was little, I didn't catch on to how like strangely violent these were at times. Also the girl that occasionally eats them, like I don't know if it's just me, but she gets too into it sometimes. I like a wild. I watched another commercial where there was literally like a whistle sound, like a I can't do it. Wait one second. That kind of sound at her. I could have just played the clip. Okay, yeah, so there it is. Um, what the hell? Look at that placement. Golly gee whiz. Maybe sex really does sell, baby. How are we gonna top that? How are we gonna pop top that? Maybe I could have said, how are we gonna top tart that? Because like, Pop is closer to the top than top. Have you guys ever heard of Shining Stars? They're like Webkins, but like somehow even more wholesome. I was obsessed with them. Any kind of stuffed animal I can log into online, I got as a child. But this one, you also got like a specific star that you could name. It was adorable. I remember logging onto the website one day. I forgot exactly what year it was, but seeing that they went bankrupt. And when I was younger, I thought bankrupt meant that you got robbed. So I was like, oh my God, they the bank got erupted. As heartbreaking and as tear jerking as that story is, let's watch the commercial. A star in your room that you can make. God, the stuffed animals look so cute. Name your very own star with shining stars. That one's mine. That's mine. And in the world of shining stars, you and your shining star friend. If I'm ever stupid rich, I'm bringing these back. Name a star, be a star with. Shining stars, wish, share, shine. You can collect them all, each sold separately from Russ. Look at that dragon. I'm, I'm obsessed. Oh, I'm so emotional. I'm so emo. The only reason that it isn't completely on top of and surpassed Pop-Tarts in the good product category is that I can't with confidence say it's this amazing product when it doesn't exist anymore. The jingle was a bop. Confident in that placement, but if it ever came back, skyrocketed. Wait, fuck, if it's discontinued, does that mean all those stars that are named after me are gone too? Maybe the real shining star was in here. Next up, Mindflex. Mindflex lets you move a ball with the power of your mind. We wanted to see how people react to- Whoa, <laughs> that girl looking at the ball was really intense. Playing Mindflex for the very first time. Awesome. Mind blowing. It'd be funny if they went mind blowing and then they like put on the headset and just goes, <laughs> This is the future of games right here. This is the future of games right here. That guy said it best. This is the future of games right here. Off topic, how many people do you know in real life that have mind flex? Never seen it out in the wild, ever. I thought for sure it was discontinued. I think when I looked it up, it still exists out there. Does it still get me hype? Not as much actually. And I remember watching this as a kid and thinking it was the true marriage between science and magic. Yeah, it, it's wild. This is doing nothing for me and I can't say whether or not it's a good product because I've never tried it before. Mindflex is the true neutral. I have no intro for this. You're just gonna have to experience wazoo. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Candy crunchies, fruity taffy, and sweet coating all come together in the new wazoo bar. Excite your taste buds with wazoo. wazoo. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory why this intrigued me as a kid. The bright colors. I've never seen a candy bar that looks like that. And then, I, I hate to even point this out, but this is what did it for me as a child. Don't take that sentence out of context. This guy is being covered in this texture that looks almost like kinetic sand slime thing. And 
texture wise that sounded amazing. Like I wanted this ooey gooey fruity bullshit. Spoiler alert. It was as disgusting as those taste buds looked. Ass dude. Straight garbage. And I am seeing like comments under this YouTube video upload of the commercial being like, oh my God, they were amazing. I just rewatched it off camera and I realized something. The child actor taking a bite out of it looks like he wants to vomit right after he puts it in his mouth. Dude, look at his face. Wazoo more like P.U. Stinky. I'm gonna put it all the way at ass in a bad way, but I'm still gonna lift it up because if it's one thing, I mean, it's entertaining. It catches your attention with that nightmare fuel. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Fruit Loop cereal straws are the only way we're gonna save the turtles. I miss his old design so much. With Fruit Loop cereal straws. So Jonas? Just dip them in and sip, sip, sip. And pull them out and munch, munch, munch. All together now dip, sip, munch. Fruit Loop cereal straws with a creamy coating inside. So fun to dip. I have a score to settle with them. But other than that, perfect product, perfect commercial. I just don't understand, like, Toucan Sam has, like, are those his nephews? Is it like a Scrooge McDuck situation? Like, it just seems like, where'd these kids come from? Are they even in the new commercials? I miss his old design so much. It's getting a little crowded in the good area. I think I'm, as I've been saying, just as impressionable as I've ever been. I wanna put it in the exact same place where Billy Mays is. I'm gonna put it right next to his thumbs up, but I just want you to know it's like right there with him. Two more commercials to go, and luckily for you, they're both so good in such different ways. Tell me, are you guys ready to get educated? I'm working for an hourly wage. I went to high school, didn't do great. Still, I gotta make more cash. More education is what I'm looking at. When I get a degree, I will make a bigger salary. So now I've got to see which college is right for me. I went on the internet and found education connection. I love her stiff dance moves. I mean, I, I can't talk, but... Let me make sure I don't flash him. Oh, fuck. I don't mean to be dramatic, but that should top the charts every day of every year. I genuinely don't even know what the service is. I'm gonna put the entertainment value literally through the roof, but I'm gonna have to make it go more towards the ass side, considering how can you make such an absolute bop? And then I'm still not interested in your product. Also, the good product side is getting full. Next up is Bella Sara. Bella Sara was a series of like trading cards with beautiful art of horses on them that you could also log on online, much like a Webkinz or Shining Stars type. And I recently found out that that website was also taken down. I think it was an Adobe Flash situation and they went all the way till 2020, but I didn't have a chance to play it recently and I'm really sad. And this is another one of those things that I'm going to do a whole video on. So again, get ready for July, August. It's gonna be a crazy summer full of uploads. Oof. The music is so powerful, but like not what you'd expect from like a kid's game ad. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> the girl just looking through the window like, I gotta say that commercial could have been stronger. Let's look at another one. I remember them getting pretty gay, dare I say? All right, she's riding on the horse. Beautiful graphics. I like the animated vibe better Enter the magical than the scary world girl looking through the window. See, look, 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 look. Here and then, wait for it. With friends. She Care like for gives the flower to the online. girl. Are they gay? Today. The girl's the horse. Wait, is now the girl the horse? Everywhere. Ask your parents before you go and Bella Sara, what? Bella Sara, you're messing me up in so many different ways. Like I miss your product, but dare I say, don't really miss the commercials that much. Sorry, bestie. Putting it all the way over in good product, but in terms of the ad, I'm putting it a little bit more towards why did I like this. In conclusion, butt lovers, I am nothing but an amalgamation of all of the media I've consumed. That's a pretty dark way of looking at the message of this video, holy shit. Or, or instead of everything I just said previously, we had a lot of fun watching commercials. Commercials are weird and kooky and silly. Maybe I'll do a part two of these one day because like I said, I've just been so brainwashed from so early on to buy every product that interests me. 
and sometimes it even makes me happy. And sometimes it's cool blue Listerine. Fuck you, I'm never using mouthwash again. Catch this stank. <sighs> okay, have a great day, butt lovers. Bye!